Hey guys, glad to see everyone. All right, 15 people here, very good. So I'll be happy to start answering your questions right away. Please write them in your chat and I will answer. Preferably write the questions in English so that everyone can understand because we have some people who are not from uh, Russia. But uh, if you cannot write your question in English, I think Russian would be fine. I'll translate it and uh, shoot my answer. So let me check if I have questions, if I have questions somewhere else. I think I had some in the comments. Not yet, not yet. Ah. Oh. Now here, I, I see one question here. Uh, so one person is asking if it makes sense to transition to management consulting and big three in general, if they have a good position in the industry already. Well, I think if you judge your position to be good, that means there is no need for you to transition anywhere, right? That means you're pretty satisfied with what you're doing. Uh, big three and management consulting in general have some decent you know, exit options, but they are not stellar rock star. So if, for example, you're a successful entrepreneur already, you won't get much from management consulting. If you're a successful manager somewhere, for example, in an IT company, going into management consulting won't give you extra credit or extra bonus to your resume because you already know lots of things, you already manage people, you already do some important stuff. What management consulting can do is increase your chances of getting a good job right after university. So once you graduate, you don't, you don't have any experience, you can get into management consulting because, because you can just pass the test and pass the interview, work there for a couple of years, and then your exit opportunities would be much better than without management consulting and without uh, prior experience. However, if you're already working in the industry for like 10 years and if you're already a senior manager somewhere, management consulting won't help because management consulting is about strategy work, about analytics. It's not that much about managing other people, which is so important in other uh, industries. Well, you know, I, I think in all companies in general, once you grow into something more than, than an analyst. So my answer to you, if you think your position is good already, you're probably right, then you should stay. If you think your position sucks and you want to change something in your life, well, in this case, I think you could try management consulting, right? But uh, be careful because uh, if you choose something you don't know, it will not necessarily be better than what you already have. Oh, very good. We still have even more people, 22 people this time, 23. Wow. I'm surprised that there are so many people, given that I speak English this time, and the majority of people who watch us are Russians. And still, I don't have any questions. That's weird. Uh, one more question I had somewhere else was about the differences between, or rather, among management consulting companies, the big three, McKinsey, Bain, and BCG. Well, uh, those differences come to uh, regional specific, regional specifics. So they are always different concerning regarding uh, well, the offices in question. For example, the Moscow offices have certain differences, and then uh, I, I don't know, London offices have differences, and then New York offices have differences. In general, if you're talking about just the brand just the stamp on your resume, all the three companies are great. If you want to go to an MBA and you want some uh, employer who will boost your chances, then all the three companies are great. If you ever look more into detail of different kinds of projects that you're gonna do, then uh, differences might arise actually. And the differences lie, well, in the sizes of the companies in different regions and also in their, uh, in their focus, I would say. For example, uh, Bain is focused on private equity globally and on analytics. Whereas McKinsey more about strategy and uh, lately implementation and then BCG is 
more, more against strategy, but less implementation. Uh, oh, here comes one question. Okay, I want a job at McKinsey. What do I have to do? Okay, well, there, there, there is lots of stuff. Uh, I think I won't be able to cover everything. Uh, you just go watch our YouTube channel and you'll discover everything. Uh, you get a good brand on your resume, a good school, uh, with good grades, good uh, internships. You craft your resume, you prepare your for tests, you pass the tests, you prepare for interviews, you pass the interviews, and you get the offer. And then you choose which company you would like to work for. <laughs> well, uh, in words, that's pretty simple. In reality, it takes, it takes months and sometimes even years to do all this stuff. Well, you can look, watch some examples, by the way, again on YouTube channel, the interviews with people who passed into management consulting some time ago, actually a couple of months ago. <clears throat> okay, Daniel uh, gives another question. Is it true that demand for consulting services in Russia is falling? I don't think so. I think uh, demand is cyclical, of course. And then when there is a downturn in, uh, in the economy in general, in, in any economy, not necessarily the Russian economy, any economy, uh, companies tend to cut on their consulting fees and they tend to cut on hiring consultants. But at the same time, uh, when the economy goes down, everything goes down, and then the companies feel lots of pressure to perform, and they need consultants. So consultants are back after, well, several months since the downturn started. So I believe uh, that even in theory, there is always more work for consultants being created uh, than being destroyed. And then in practice, what I hear from my friends in different companies, they don't complain about lack of projects in, in, in Russia. Well, but at the same time, of course, uh, they say that uh, I think probably last year, maybe maybe beginning this year, it was more, there, there were more opportunities for international travel, meaning that because projects are not that, uh, abundant well there, there are still lots of projects but you can get an opportunity to go somewhere else to a different office and work uh, in a different uh, country that's what i did to back four years ago by the way and that was great experience and i think that's a great opportunity for those who go into consulting right now so uh, all in all you shouldn't worry about downturns downturns create more consulting opportunities and they also create more more work for you guys more work for you uh, outside of Russia. Okay. Uh, differences among different departments in, in McKinsey. Okay. Uh, strictly speaking, there are no uh, specific departments uh, at McKinsey. There are some practices, consulting practices, but uh, most of the consultants are generalists anyways, and they do all kinds of things. Uh, there are lots of functional practices like strategy, operations, uh, marketing, organization, uh, what else, uh, finance, whatnot. And then there are practices devoted to certain industries like basic materials, oil and gas, uh, banking, telco, stuff like that. And the, the, the major difference is that uh, these practices are involved in industries or functions that they're dedicated to. But at the same time, the level of dedication is high among, among partners, and maybe junior partners, maybe senior managers, but not among uh, associates and analysts. So you shouldn't really worry about that. You can switch different functions, different industries while you're young, while you just joined the company and then choose. And once you grow, you'll be able to pick and you'll be, and by that time, you'll be able to know the differences better than I do because I, I, I primarily worked in private equity engagements and I primarily worked, well, some strategy stuff, uh, some finance stuff, some pharma stuff, but that's it. So not, 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 not too many different, uh, different practices. Uh, private equity practice uh, at McKinsey. Okay. Uh, 
What does private equity practice uh, at McKinsey or at other management consulting companies do in general? They do commercial due diligences, they do exit strategies, they do turnarounds sometimes, and they do all the work from a, from the strategic point of view, from the business management point of view that uh, private equity funds need to buy a company, to improve a company, and to sell a company. So what I did was primarily commercial due diligence. This is when you come uh, to a client, a client's a private equity fund, and uh, measure the ability of the company to uh, generate revenue in the future. You test certain sort of hypotheses about what the market will look like, what challenges the company will face, what the competition will be, and stuff like that. And based on that, you come up with a top line for the market, uh, market projection. Then you come up with a revenue projection. Maybe some projections about costs, but you don't really go deep into financial stuff because financial stuff is for investment bankers and management consultants do not give uh, recommendations concerning prices of assets. Uh, the engagements of the projects are usually pretty intense because they are short and you need to collect different pieces of information quickly and you, may, you need to make a decision based on this information pretty quickly. Uh, so that's why many people fear uh, going into private equity engagements and try to avoid them as best they can. But based on my experience, uh, it all depends on what kind of people you work with. Like in any engagement at, at a management consultancy, and I guess like in any business in general, if the people that you work with are great and inspiring and efficient and productive, then you really don't need to worry about, uh, about the project. Then you'll do well. Perhaps you will have to work hard, but that's fine. But overall, your feeling will be great. Whereas if you don't like the people you work with, if there is no chemistry between you and them, then any project will suck. So my experience was that people in the private equity uh, practice at McKinsey are amazing. And I had such fun and such pleasure working with them that I didn't really suffer the consequences of long engagements. Uh, not long, the in intense private equity engagements. Uh, so I guess it's, it all comes down to finding your team and finding people that you like to work with. Same thing about private equity, same thing about, about anything. Okay. Uh, if I didn't manage to get into big three, is it better to go to the second tier company or to industry? Well, it all depends on what offers you get and it all depends a lot on your interests. And it all depends a lot on the people you're gonna work with. Because uh, if you perform well in an industry, in some company in industry, and if your team is great, you'll be able to grow tremendously. If the team sucks and you don't really like uh, to do what you're supposed to do in the industry, then of course you won't grow. But the same thing goes to, to consulting, to second tier, even to first tier, it doesn't matter. I would say there is no prior uh, extreme difference uh, between going into management consulting second tier and going into the industry. It's important that you do work and it's important that you really learn. In the second tier, you will learn. In the industry, I guess you will. But if the company that you're going to work with is uh, dedicated to teaching and to improving their employees. If it doesn't, then you need to run away from such companies, of course. Uh, but this that should be judged on a case-by-case -case basis, I think. I won't be able to answer this question in general. <clears throat> Any insights about uh, Big Three in Kazakhstan? <clears throat> okay, uh, I know that uh, most uh, th there are now a, a few offices in Kazakhstan of Big Three companies, but uh, there are not so many projects. And uh, oftentimes, uh, people from Kazakhstan come to Moscow or to Kiev or to some other neighboring uh, countries and work there. Uh, the projects are primarily geared at the public sector, uh, the government being the main uh, client, or well, kind of the main major client, so to speak, 
because well, there are minor clients, the companies and the major clients who pays everything. Uh, the question whether anything gets implemented, I guess yes, because the government uh, in Kazakhstan is pretty interested in uh, getting uh, value for mine. Uh, I think not everything is implemented, but that's fine. Not everything is implemented anywhere, but uh, they're pretty dedicated to, to uh, making things happen. And I know that sometimes big four companies uh, dive into implementing things that big three developed in Kazakhstan. I've heard it several times from my students and from fellow uh, from friends uh, from big three in Kazakhstan. So, yeah, they try to implement best they can, and oftentimes they do, but of course not always. Uh, part-time positions to big three, part-time, a part-time intern, uh, case support. Well, uh, I think this is good uh, practice if you don't have anything to do, but otherwise they don't produce uh, management consultants, these positions, unfortunately. So these are not regular interns and your chances of getting into a proper role at the McKinsey or Bain or BCG uh, are pretty, pretty low. So I would personally, if I, were, if, if I were back five years ago, I think I'd rather avoid uh, going into part-time internships, but rather uh, dedicate more time to learning and uh, probably spend more time on getting a better internship a proper internship in some other company. Uh, I worked with several case support guys uh, while at McKinsey, bright, bright talented guys, uh, very driven, uh, inspired to get into consulting, but many of them actually fail, unfortunately, because either their math skills are not good enough or their English skills are not enough. Uh, in particular, I remember one person who helped me on projects a lot, and the person was quite smart. The person was from the math department of the Moscow State University. And the person didn't get in, even though uh, they worked on quite a few projects at McKinsey. So they already knew the internal cuisine, so to speak. But the feedback was, well, communication skills not good enough. English skills not good enough. And well, uh, the person went uh, into the industry, which is fine. But I think given the hours that you need to work uh, in these positions and the time uh, and the other activities you need to forgo in order to work in these positions don't really, uh, uh, well, uh, these things cost more than what you get uh, from working in case support. I'd rather not go there. Uh, uh, is it useful for students of first, second, third year? Well, uh, my personal take on it is that you can always find something better to do than case support because it won't really give you lots of chances of getting it. I think even going uh, into a master's program, uh, like I did, for example, when I went to study at Bocconi University, or uh, working uh, on a proper position, position somewhere else, or maybe going into a master's program somewhere else, that would still be better. And that would be a better time spent. Uh, is there any way to make into McKinsey with masters in construction management from US to Auckland, New Zealand? Yeah, certainly. I well, of course, I don't know that well different universities in other countries, but I guess that uh, that should be all right, provided that uh, you have some experience, some internships, provided that you also have high uh, scores in your tests. I mean the test that you take at uh, McKinsey and BCG. And I think you could also take GMAT, for example, and show your score on your CV. And in this case, you'll be able to attract attention to your profile, even if your profile is not that geared towards, consu uh, towards consulting, given your uh, education. And also, they say that... Uh, that networking helps a lot uh, in getting into management consulting if you don't have uh, the proper profile. Uh, that's especially true for, for the Western countries, for uh, the United States, definitely so, for London, I think, also as well. And I would also, I would bet that New Zealand would work as well, this way as well. So just try to find people who would refer you 
uh, to the company and then gets prepared for tests, for interviews and whatnot, uh, just to make sure that you show your best if you're given a chance. And I think uh, you'll be given a chance. Uh, uh, do people from regional universities, oh, that's, that's a similar question to the previous one, from uh, non, uh, not major universities, given that they have certain accomplishments like case competitions, and uh, internship experience uh, past scre screening. Yes, I think, I think they can, but passing screening, uh, as you rightly mentioned, right out of university would be more difficult. You'll need to show something else. Because, well, uh, the stereotype is that all the smart people uh, after school uh, go to Moscow universities, my, I mean, in Russia. So if you don't go to, to Moscow university and you stay in some regional university, that most likely means the stereotype goes again, that you, you weren't really hard working enough and you weren't really pushing that hard to build a career. You had some other values and you had some other concerns. Very often, uh, that's actually true, but not always. And you need to show that that stereotype doesn't work for you. Just getting good grades in some uh, not that famous university won't really help. I think you'll need to get some internship experience, some good internship experience, uh, some good, uh, again, maybe GMAT score, maybe get a good master's degree in a Moscow university, that, that will also boost your chances. Uh, uh, get a good full-time experience in FMCG, for example, and then your chances of transitioning will be uh, much higher. But at the same time, nothing prevents you from applying to the big three uh, in the first place, even from a regional university. Try your luck, try your chances, apply and see how it goes. If it does go, that's fine. You have two years to try again. You have one year to try again. You'll apply later. If it works fine, then awesome. You don't need to spend time on getting a master's degree somewhere or on getting an internship somewhere or getting a full-time position somewhere. You can go into consulting straight away. Awesome. Good for you. Why not? Okay. Please give a recommendation for those with only engineering background. Engineering background is awesome. How to plan a smooth transition from engineering to consulting? I'm a student right now. Okay. Engineering is awesome because it gives you a certain way of thinking, which is very helpful in management consulting. Uh, it gives you a structured way of thinking and at the same time, very good level of creativity. Now, uh, the bad thing for you uh, is that your communication skills are probably not that good because you didn't really have time to participate in different, uh, so to speak, social sciences subjects, humanities subjects, where you need to talk a lot, you need to work in teams with people, and you need to deliver uh, projects together. That's okay, I think, but you need to work on this handicap, so to speak, in order to improve it. The best way to work on that and, uh, is joining some student associations or student clubs and doing some extracurricular activities where you need to work in teams. Uh, Probably getting some organizational role uh, in, in a student association, like president of something or manager of external relations or whatever, so that you work in a team towards uh, a common result. This is what will help you build your uh, networking, your communication and people skills in general. Also, I always recommend doing uh, debating. I think debating is awesome because it also develops your public speaking skills and also a lot of fun and opportunity to meet lots of people and to travel a lot. So if you have a chance to debate, especially in English, that would be a great boost to your, to your chances in consulting. Uh, if not, uh, get an extracurricular activity where you can communicate with people and that should also increase your chances. Mm. Does McKinsey implementation and strategy differ in terms of uh, salaries, uh, in terms of grades and whatever? Well, in terms of salaries, I think uh, there are no differences. In terms of career progression, I'm not so sure because it seems that uh, implementation is kind of a separate animal uh, which plays in its separate league. So that means that once you go into implementation, uh, you might not be able to grow as fast uh, 
uh, into a partner. And I'm not sure if you, if implementation experts are promoted to partners at all, if it's a consulting track, I'm not sure. I know that usually working in some very niche practices, like even private equity practice at McKinsey, which is quite small still, uh, usually uh, hampers your chances of getting a promotion just because you don't get the necessary client base. My guess is that something similar could happen with uh, implementation, but I'm not sure. Implementation is a very new thing and we still need to see how things go and how progressions go in uh, implementation. Uh, well, I think you can try. I think you can try joining McKinsey implementation anyways. And then if necessary, I think you can switch. Well, I'm not so sure, frankly speaking, because switching uh, from a dedicated expert role, for example, in R&D, uh, R&I, research and uh, whatever, I don't remember, uh, is not that straightforward as you could expect, but still you can try. So I think uh, getting into McKinsey implementation would be a good idea anyways, and then you'll, you'll understand everything better once you're there. Uh, hmm. Mm -hmm. CFA, is it useful? Uh, what achievements uh, are valued most? Well, uh, CFA is not that relevant because you don't really do lots of serious financial work in consulting. CFA, I think, is more for uh, investment analysts, probably for investment bankers, but also to up to a certain extent. But for consultants, I guess, no. GMAT, well, GMAT score, high GMAT score would, of course, be impressive, but... Uh, a good university and a good internship would be more important, I think. Uh, by a good internship, I mean some big brand name company uh, like FMCG companies, well, Coca-Cola, uh, Procter & Gamble, Mars, uh, maybe tobacco products. I guess Telco would also work. Other consulting companies? Uh, Masters abroad, such things would definitely value more, uh, way more than uh, than GMAT or CFA. Now, among some quick and easy achievements, I think GMAT would be a good thing, but again, it's not, not that valued that much as you would expect. Uh, Okay, questions from, from, from Vaga. Uh, McKinsey say that when you join the company, you start with being a consultant of a common profile gen uh, generalist, okay, and obtain a certain practice orientation. Yeah, after, after a while you do. You start as a generalist, you do projects here and there, switch from here to there, and then, well, and then uh, choose your, uh, your path. Well, I, I think officially you need to choose your path somewhere after you become a manager or even later uh, but still that's not that strict uh, the, the, there is no this uh, strict point where you necessarily have to uh, to choose your specialization and, until you are a partner I think uh, uh, okay Okay, uh, uh, you didn't give a precise answer on big four plus masters uh, in Russia or Western, not that great masters without experience. Well, uh, good question. Difficult to, th to say. Uh, I think... Well, I'm not that sure. I, 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 I might be wrong, but I think that uh, for getting into uh, consulting, for, for the consulting skills, big four plus any masters would be better. But for, uh, so fr from the achievement point of view, of course, a, a great, a, a good masters abroad would be, would be better. But from, from the skills point of view and from your chances of getting into consulting, I think big four would be, would be better. But if you think of going uh, 
into Masters of Business Administration sometime, uh, getting a foreign uh, Masters would be better because that would be your international experience, right? And all MBA programs right now are crazy about international experience. If you don't have it, uh, chances are your progression to MBA would be more complicated. But uh, frankly speaking, I think you need to judge on a case-by-case -case basis whether uh, masters in Russia plus uh, big four is better or worse than uh, an unknown masters from from yours somewhere else. Uh, yeah, I think I, I think it's necessary to be more more specific in a case by case basis. Okay. Uh, Mm, only after some time, depending on your previous engagements. Okay, that's the continuation of, uh, question from Vaga. Does it also work for candidates applying for experience position? Ah, okay, Vaga. So if you apply for an experience position, uh, you would also most likely be a generalist, but based on your experience, you'd be hunted more for certain types of projects. And once you develop expertise within McKinsey for a certain type of project, you, you'll become a dedicated uh, consulting in this practice. Whether this is a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. It depends on your interests and whether you want to stick to the track that you followed before you joined uh, management consulting. For example, uh, my first my first project was a capital expenditures optimization project that took six months and that was pretty boring. So I did my best to avoid another CapEx project because if I had two or three CapEx projects following one another, I would become a CapEx expert, something I didn't want to be. But if you are a marketing guru, for example, and you join McKinsey and you want to be marketing guru across different industries, uh, then uh, marketing yourself as a marketing guru would probably be a good idea. Uh, and that's what, what you could do uh, then. Uh, any specific differences in recruitment uh, process in case you're applying to Pax, Pax McKinsey? I wonder what Pax McKinsey is, <laughs> frankly speaking. I don't know, so I, I can tell. Any tips for networking and consulting, uh, except using LinkedIn? Well, being friendly and trying to find people anywhere and trying to be useful to people, not trying to make use of them, but rather to be useful to them. Uh, and then trying hard, trying hard and uh, getting to know lots of different people because most, of, most people won't reply to you. Most people won't have time. Most people don't want to be bothered. So you need to be pushing, but in a polite way, you need to be helpful and useful and you need to be friendly. Those, I think, are the three things that you need for networking. Well, I, I personally got into management consulting without networking, but networking helped me a lot in building my career in management consulting, especially when I started doing international projects. I think I wouldn't be able to do international projects without uh, networking. Networking was paramount in developing within McKinsey. And that's what I used. I tried to be friendly. I tried to reach out to a lot of people and I try to be useful, and that helped. Uh, uh, do, do we provide uh, code uh, resume screening at FLES? Uh, not yet, not currently, because we don't have a dedicated person uh, to do that. But I think you could still your, send us your resume and I, I, I can give it a quick look, maybe like three minutes. Basically what, what a, a recruiter would do because the recruiter wouldn't spend more time on your resume than more time than that. So you're welcome to do that. Uh, do I think it makes sense to go uh, do an MBA abroad? Well, it depends on what makes sense to you. Uh, it depends on your goals. If you want to get international experience and you haven't gotten it yet, then going uh, abroad and getting your MBA somewhere else would be amazing. If you have lots of international experience and don't want to waste money, then don't go. If you want to go live somewhere else and try to stay abroad, for example, if you want to work 
in, uh, in the United States, then you can try and go there. Uh, even though chances right now are reduced because of the new immigration policy. Uh, but you can try. If you, uh, if you need to, uh, to take on a huge loan in order to go there, like, for example, I had to, then I think it's not a good idea to go. Uh, if, on the other hand, you're going solo, uh, you're getting a good scholarship and pretty much you're not tied up to anything, then why not go? Have fun for two years, maybe learn something, change your mind, most likely, and come back. Or maybe not come back. So again, I think this is a complex question. And well, like uh, my, my reply to, to many previous questions, sorry. It also comes down to your personal situation rather than to a rule of thumb that works for everyone. There is none in this case, like in most cases. Um, what about relocation in big three? Uh, well, it's not that straightforward, but doable. For example, I have a few friends who went abroad and uh, now work abroad. I, got, I have a good friend who is an engagement manager like right now in London. Uh, and we came to McKinsey together uh, five years ago. So it's all doable, but you need to be extremely push and you need to be extremely driven in order to do that. So there is no automatic relocation anywhere. And most forces are against you rather than for you in this relocation thing. So rather than expect that once you get into uh, McKinsey, you'll be given a great chance to relocate, uh, you'll need to push. You'll need to push even harder than you had to when you got into McKinsey. I actually think that getting into McKinsey is easier than getting a relocation from McKinsey Moscow to some other office. Uh, it depends on lots of luck, lots of networking, and lots of... Uh, uh, stamina and lots of drive, but it's it's doable. It's doable, and I think you'll know it better once you get there. Uh, it's easier to get into offices like London and I think New York, which are more international, uh, and offices where there are lots of people already uh, from different countries. Also, Middle East, like Dubai, I think also is a great office to get in because uh, there are always there there is always lots of work and very few consultants because locals tend not to work, <laughs> lucky for them, or, or not. Uh, but going to, uh, relocating to, I don't know, to, to Milan or to Barcelona or to Paris would be pretty difficult because you are not natives there, unless you are, of course. For example, uh, my level of commander with Italian was uh, C2 uh, back five years ago, but I wasn't able to get even on a single project there. So no one replied to me. And my understanding was that uh, I was just not needed because I'm not local. My language was okay, but it was clear that I'm not Italian and I wouldn't be able to build such strong ties, uh, interpersonal ties with clients. You, you understand that in order to, uh, to be able to jog with clients, in order to be able to discuss things, things, discuss sports, books, movies, whatever with a client, you need to have the same cultural code as they do. For example, uh, we in Russia would be able to discuss lots of Russian literature or politics or make fun of recent TV series or discuss some Soviet cinema. And, well, that's our common ground. But if a, a Russian person goes to the United States and works there, it will be very difficult for them to discuss uh, American sports, to discuss their TV series, to discuss their books, their movies, and their culture in general, their politics. You'll be lost because you won't understand the jokes. You won't understand what's going on. You won't understand the context. And that will be difficult. That would make it difficult for you to build the ties even if your language skills are okay. So uh, it's easier to get uh, into offices where uh, culture is not that big of an issue. And also it's easier to get uh, into offices where you have connections with some partners or anyone, partners primarily, because they will be those who will uh, drive your transition. Uh, mm -hmm. What is better uh, in the profile for screening? Internship at Big Four or FMCG Mars? Uh, 
uh, and yeah, does uh, masters at high school of management uh, matter? Well, masters at high school of management matters, uh, which is better big for FMCG? Well, close tie. Uh, both are good. If you want to go to some Russian company, uh, which is not famous for developing people, uh, then that would be a bad internship for your consulting prospects. But if you're going to a, uh, to a big international company, which is uh, devoted to developing people, uh, and both uh, big four and FMCG companies are famous for that, uh, you don't really have to worry. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. uh, insights about... Uh... Okay, I think I got lost with the comments. Mm -hmm. uh, insights about uh, size of metals mining practice in McKinsey. Uh, I think it's pretty big. Uh, and, uh, there, are, there, are, there are lots of partners, lots of practices. Uh, lo 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 lots of projects, engagements. I think I won't be able to give you specific details. First thing, because that might be confidential and I don't want to uh, behave unprofessional. And also, I don't really know that much. I think that would be a good question for your uh, recruiting events sometime. Go talk to Lea, for example. He'll be able to, to tackle that. No. What's the minimum GPA for big three? There is no minimum requirement for GPA, but you need to have a spike somewhere. So you need to be exceptional, outstanding. If you are, uh, GPA won't be a big thing. If you are not, if you don't have something in your pocket that would show you off, then, well, a good GPA won't be enough. This is not just, uh, consulting is not just for nerds. Consulting, well, at least this is how the companies try to position themselves, is for exceptional stellar people. Well, that's, uh, that's, of course, not necessarily true, but this is what they're trying to sell. And you need to sell yourself this way. So if you can show you're exceptional, uh, even without GPA, then good. That's what you should do. If you cannot, uh, well, then GPA won't really help. Uh, what would you improve at McKinsey so that it would be even a better place to work at? Oh, good question. What would I improve at uh, McKinsey? Well, uh, first thing that comes to mind is some uh, people interaction. Uh, but I know how to improve it. I would, I would somehow... Uh, try to make the matching process uh, between uh, between projects and uh, people, the teams, uh, somewhat better. Because sometimes when you're a great match to a team, you work amazing and, and, you, and you enjoy your work. If you are not a good match to a team, you don't really match your, par your partner, you don't really match your manager, then that would be a disaster. So I think uh, some matching process, uh, increased matching process would be better. Some uh, improvement in uh, staffing procedures would be beneficial. But that's difficult to do because there are projects that need to be done and everyone wants to do projects in cool industries somewhere in Western Europe, for example. But there are not enough projects for all people who want that. And there is stuff that needs to be done. So... Uh, and someone has to do it. So you shouldn't complain, no, they say, and they are right. Uh, of course, that would be great to improve stuffing, and many people complain about it, uh, but I don't really see how you could do that. Mm -hmm. What do you think about starting business and consultants and establish a company? Well, why not? As long as uh, demand is high, what quality should a new consultancy company have to be competitive? Ah, you need to have a brand. You need to have connections to find clients. The most difficult thing in consulting is to find clients. The second most difficult thing is to attract people. So you'll need to tackle both of this, these things. You'll need to find clients who trust you and you'll need to be able to sell your company uh, to 
potential employees because everyone everyone wants to join uh, McKinsey, Bain, and BCG, right? Most people don't even consider to your two companies, which is I think a big mistake, and even less so they will consider you a consult your new consultancy, especially if you are not a rock star from uh, big three. So if you understand how to tackle finding clients and how to tackle hiring, which would be super difficult, uh, then establishing a new consultancy would be an amazing opportunity. But if you don't know how to answer these questions, and I think, uh, I'm not sure I would be able to answer those questions definitely if I were to start my own consultancy, then, well, uh, you might find hard time doing that. Okay. Ah, by the way, guys, one small request to you. Why don't you like this video right now so that more people will be able to watch that? And I will pretty much appreciate uh, if you put your likes. That would be super awesome. Oh, I see that the sound is put in already. Well, thank you, guys. <laughs> Very much appreciate it. Okay, uh, going further, uh, uh, what about internships in marketing? Uh, in uh, automotive industry, not BMW, Toyota, uh, would it be a good uh, achievement? I think it would be a good achievement, but it all, of course, depends on what you'll be doing there, whether you'll be doing some uh, analytical work or whether you'll be doing some manual work, uh, not that important, whether you'll be able to show off your achievements in, uh, in resume. So not, not just brand. The brand is okay. The, yeah, Renault is a, is a good brand. BMW is a good brand. Toyota is a good brand. But you need to do something there. So brand alone is not enough. Uh, next question. Uh, is there a perfect time to quit Big 3 that would maximize your exit opportunities? Are there any additional staff provided or recommended by FES to pass PST except the main PST course? Okay, well, two separate questions. First question, uh, best time to exit. I think best time to exit is when you are offered a great opportunity somewhere else. Uh, if you have a client who says, okay, come join this uh, new practice of ours, uh, this new department which you will be heading, uh, and where your salary will increase three times, your salary will triple, then that's the, the best opportunity. If you don't get these offers, uh, then it's not yet the best opportunity, I think. Uh, same thing about getting, for example, in private equity funds. I have a, a good friend uh, who was my manager who went from McKinsey to manage, to, to being a, C, a chief operations officer at a, at a big uh, private equity fund. And he enjoys that. And uh, that was, I think, the best time for him to quit. At the same time, even if you are a partner or a manager and you don't have specific options and you just quit and then start hunting around, that probably won't result in much uh, to your benefit. So I'd rather suggest that you wait a bit and uh, get the offers. Unless you want to do something else like I did. I, I wanted to start FLES anyways and I didn't want to uh, do anything else. So to me, that was a perfect time as well. I, I didn't need to wait for any offers because I wouldn't take any anyways. Uh, are there any additional staff provider recommended by first to pass PST except the main PST course? Well, uh, if you take the main PST course, then it's uh, it's easy to understand whether you need anything else or not. If uh, it appears that after taking the PST course, you need to further develop math skills, then there's the math course dedicated specifically to math but uh, geared uh, at uh, tests. So very similar to uh, problem solving tests, but lots of math questions rather than generic questions. Same thing if your verbal skills are not that good, there's a dedicated verbal course that plunges deeper into the matters of logic, reasoning, reading comprehension, uh, and stuff like that in English. And that's a, that becomes pretty clear after you pass the course. Uh, in general, if you want to prepare for PST, it's important to read a lot and it's important to be good with numbers. Uh, it's important to be good with lazy computations, avoid unnecessary computations and uh, do only what's required. Uh, knowing how to process information efficiently. But those are the things that you can watch in the theory videos on, on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can get it all there. 
in terms of in terms of theory. Uh, how is Master from New Zealand top university regarded globally while considering for recruitment in McKinsey Big Four and New Oceania countries as well as the Middle East? I think a top New Zealand university would be considered pretty high. So well, your chances of applying there would be would be pretty good, especially if you also have some proper internship or work experience. I think a top university from from um, from a country like Australia or New Zealand would be uh, would be great. Uh, okay, I, I got lost again. Try again. Uh, how is that? Okay, same thing. Which which masters, for example, at uh, High School of Economics in Moscow would better suit consultancy, career track, and future corporate finance or international business? Mathematics. <laughs> Mathematics would be best fit. Anything related to uh, hard sciences, to engineering, to uh, mathematics, to statistics would be better. Because, frankly speaking, international business and stuff is just blah, blah, blah. Uh, same thing about, well, corporate finance is a bit more precise, but still it doesn't provide you engineering view on things. So I would definitely recommend you doing some uh, hard science uh, masters rather than uh, soft sciences. Both taught in English. Yeah, English would be good, but still I think uh, better would be. Oh, hard economics would also work, for example. I did my master's in economics, but that was really hardcore economics with lots of real analysis, statistics, econometrics, uh, time series analysis, and stuff like that. So there was lots of math, which helped me, by the way, getting into uh, Yandex Data Science School. If I didn't go, if I hadn't gone to uh, Bocconi, I think I, I wouldn't have passed the, the math exam. Uh, and I think my chances at getting at McKinsey would have been diminished as well. So math rules, I would really advise to go for math. Mm -hmm. uh, is it true that uh, upper route policy does not work for high position? For example, an associate cannot become a manager if there are not enough vacancies. Uh, no, that's not true. Uh, uh, manager vacancies are always there and most likely you'll get promoted if you work well enough. Uh, uh, out does not necessarily work, not always. So in order to get an out, uh, uh, you either need to work extremely poorly or there need to be a huge slump in demand. And I had a friend who faced this situation some time ago, uh, who got fired after six months probably just because they had to cut down on the number of people in the office. Yeah, that was pretty disappointing, but that, that, that did happen. But otherwise, don't worry about your growth. There will be a chance for you to grow. For a partner position, that will be more difficult because you, as the number of partners grow, uh, the opportunities diminish. And also, you need to bring new clients, which is also difficult if there are lots of partners and all major clients already. Uh, but uh, up until uh, be becoming a partner, I think you should you shouldn't really worry. Mm -hmm. uh, IBM IX uh, good alternative for uh, big three. I think yes. I think IBM IX is an amazing opportunity which sprung up just a few years ago. Because if you want to work in digital, I think it's better to work in a company who has digital at its core, like IBM. Uh, then a company who has strategy at its core, but who don't really have lots of uh, deep expertise in digital, like McKinsey, Bain, or BCG. Uh, well, all both choices have pros and cons, uh, but I would really seriously consider IBM IX. I think IBM IX is, is a great place. Mm -hmm. What do you like and dislike about consulting, consult, you know, McKinsey corporate culture? Uh, I like I think I like uh, three things. I like efficiency. I like uh, mm, uh, the work being split among different people. And I like uh, the opportunity to work with amazing people. Uh, what I don't like, 
I don't like uh, that the culture is pretty intense. And sometimes when uh, the pressure is on, you need to deliver to a deadline. Uh, sometimes uh, you need to work against uh, personal relations. Uh, you need to deliver results at the expense of, well, probably staying friends with, with someone. Uh, you need to push harder to make someone work if, if they don't. But that, that's okay because that's always the case. You, you're either friends or work efficient. Uh, one thing, one else, one thing else I don't like is occasional corporate politics. Uh, but I think that's the case for for any place. So if you have good connections in the company in your local office, uh, you'll be promoted easier than if you don't. Of course, you also need to work hard and you need to deliver. But at the same time, uh, you also need to have connections. Just working uh, exceptionally well won't be enough. Uh, what do you think about PC materials difficulty? For example, test from I get an offer I'm consulting. Uh, I think they have quite a few mistakes and they sometimes are off in terms of difficulty. Some questions are just way too easy and some questions are way too difficult, uh, something that you won't see in a real PC. This is something we discussed with our students today, by the way. Uh, so I think if you don't have anything else, then use them. Uh, these tests better than nothing. Uh, if you have something better, I suggest you do something better. For example, for Flask, we had to develop our own tests just because uh, external tests that which we could buy, they suck. Um, or you can use GMAT, for example. GMAT is also pretty close to what to what you should to what you should expect in a PST. Well. Is it better to apply for big three internship or entry level position right after getting master's degree? It doesn't matter where you apply. You will most likely get an internship offer because right now, given huge demand of applicants, uh, the big three companies can choose and they, they won't hire you for, for full-time uh, business analyst positions. I got business analyst five years ago, but I think I was lucky and I had an international uh, international masters and I think the demand was lower so I, I was lucky but this time I'm not sure how it works but it doesn't matter because if you are a strong candidate well, whom they want to hire they will offer you a business analyst position which is extremely rare but possible if you are not that strong uh, you'll get an internship position if you are not strong enough at all no help you won't get an offer at all Mm -hmm. uh, uh, client manager experience in a consulting company is the experience relevant well the experience is relevant but again you need to prove that you have problem solving skills so that's the opposite of engineers for example you have good problem solving skills but you don't have uh, you have good uh, communication skills but not good enough problem solving skills so that would probably help you pass screening but then you might stumble upon ps team not pass it or you might stumble upon case interviews and not be structured enough and not pass it and uh, that would be a hurdle on your way into consulting so in general, the experience is useful, but make sure that this experience brings value to you and you can leverage it efficiently from, from different, ang different angles. Uh, uh, now they're implementing a game assessment. The first time uh, they have taken it was in London. Any comments? Uh, yeah, I heard that they are uh, trying to start game assessments rather than problem solving tests. Uh, I think that would be easier, but I'm not sure when they will be able to roll it off because that's a pretty complicated thing. Uh, problem solving test works well for uh, mm, selecting people, and the game usually works well for selecting uh, psychometrics, for example, the type of personality you are, but it's not that good at uh, checking your analytical skills. And they might decide that uh, the selection that this test, this game does, does really work. So, oh, it, maybe they decide it does work, but uh, it might take some time before they finally implement it.
if it works well, then that would be a super, super good thing. But I doubt that it will work well. Uh, I think you'll see it in practice if they start implementing it, maybe uh, sometime uh, second half of 2019, maybe. Uh, and then you'll, you'll probably, if you don't want to test to take PST, you can wait one year and try to apply next year uh, in 12 months. Maybe they, they get rid of PST altogether, uh, but I'm not that sure. Okay. Uh, Uh, supply chain analytics uh, uh, do will they be able to do people with supply chain analytics experience will they be able to do private equity in uh, big three well it depends on your networking skills you don't get an opportunity to work in private equity just because you had supply chain experience or marketing experience or whatnot the, these like, experiences in most private equity work uh, are not relevant what is relevant is your ability to persuade partners to get you onto a project. So whatever your prior background, in theory, you can get there, but it's very difficult. It, and it all comes down to your personal skills rather than your no, professional experience. Entry-level jobs or internship in New Zealand for student who is pursuing master's in civil engineering involves starting career from scratch. Okay. Do you think this will hurt chances for Big Four? Well, st starting your career from scratch. Uh, do you mean starting your career from scratch in Big Four? I think that would be that would be a good opportunity uh, to start your career from scratch from Big Four because Big Four in general are more friendly to hiring people uh, with no background. And background in Big Four is a good thing for applying later in Big Three or anywhere else because Big Four is a great school of uh, corporate work. They don't pay you that much, of course, but at the, at the same time, they teach you and they develop you, and this is great. So I think your chances at Big Four right after university will be, uh, would be pretty high, and that, that might be a good opportunity, actually. How to start a career in business analytics just after graduation in engineering? Should I spend more time programming in analytics on platforms like R or Nestar, or should I uh, directly give some? Okay, how do you how do you start? Uh, well, it, it depends on what uh, analytics work you need to do. For example, in salt analyst does have to do uh, analytics work. Uh, it does have to write code in R or Python or anywhere. Uh, business analytics is not about that. You need to work in. Uh, Excel, you need to work in PowerPoint and uh, lately in uh, what's the name of the software? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Okay, it doesn't matter uh, for visualizing, visualizing things. I, I didn't use it. Uh, so you'll need to use that, not programming languages. But at the same time, you need to have good communication, you need to have good problem solving skills, like solving structuring problems, solving math problems, solving. Uh, translating business problems into into structure and uh, language of uh, maybe engineering and math. That's what you need to do. Uh, programming is something that other people would do. Uh, how do you start that? I think the best thing to start, the best way to start is uh, get an internship somewhere in a business analyst role, in a consulting or in, uh, develop the skills there. I, I think I, I can kind of come up with, with a better alternative. And doing that right after finishing your undergrad school is quite possible. So definitely you should do that. Uh, mm -hmm. How is performance assessed in McKinsey? How often is feedback is collected and communicated? Uh, performance is assessed every three months. Uh, there is a performance committee which collects feedback from uh, all the people that you worked with, and then there is a person who presents your uh, case uh, to other partners, and then it's a grade to put to you to put your uh, track, uh, track plus, distinctive, track minus, council to leave, whatever, and based on that, your bonus is defined and your uh, promotion is defined. Uh, they say that uh, HR department says PST result and CV combined. What do you think about it? 
uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know who says that, but I think that they need to assess your CV first, and then you invite to PhD. And uh, you, you need to, 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 to get a certain number of points on PST. Just because you have a good CV won't help you get uh, through PST. You need to, to score well on PST as well. So you don't really need to worry about uh, being your CV and PST uh, checked combined. No. I've applied for being in McKinsey in uh, Latin America. Today I took the PST plus the game, so maybe it starts to be more common. You need to pass both advanced, uh, to advance the first round. Uh, well, again, from, from, from what, what, what I heard in Moscow, uh, they just tested it, but uh, you need to pass PST only in order to pass to the second round. And uh, the game uh, that some people took was necessary only for uh, for, for that testing, so that they know whether the software works or not. Uh, but maybe it's different in Latin America, so maybe you need to pass pass both PST and the game. The game, well, from what I heard, the game is quite easy, much easier than than, than PST. So you you should really, if you pass PST, you don't need to worry about the game. Uh, how many interviews the candidate has to pass after PST? Always two? Well, not necessarily. Two rounds, uh, sometimes three rounds, but it depends on how well you perform in your, uh, in your interviews. For example, I had two interviews each round because uh, the interviewers were quite happy with my performance. If they were not happy, then I would get more, more rounds, uh, more interviews in each round. How many interviews the candidate? Okay, that's what I answered. What are the core skills that Big Four will value while recruiting the fresh grad commercial real estate department? Uh, problem solving, attention to detail, uh, and I think communication. Those would be the key things. What kind of internships will help me? Uh, I think Big Four internship. FMCG internship and any big brand name company internship will help you. That's what usually uh, matters for screening processes. Well, I guess in, in all companies and in big three, big four as well. Okay, no more questions. Okay, wait for uh, 30 more seconds. If no one come up, comes up with a question, we'll, we'll call it today. And by the way, again, if you haven't done it yet, please like the video. I'll pretty much appreciate it. Uh, that way I know whether uh, this video is useful or not. Uh, okay, we still have uh, 20 seconds again. Uh, what was the most useful skills you learned during your time at McKinsey? Ah, interesting. I think I think I have uh, a video on that. Let me share with you. So, where was it? All right. Okay. I uh, here, 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 here. Ah, okay. Yeah. Here. Um, okay. I think that's it. Thank you guys. Cheers. Until next time.